Seven at two. And just the one hit. Your heart sinks when you see dice rolls like that. It's the, the disparity of it. But that is the way the leper crumbles. Okay, welcome back. This is video number three in our playthrough of the House War Against America, where the coalition forces attempt to stop America from creating the atom bomb in eight turns. We are on the fifth turn now. We just tipped over that tipping point of halfway, and we can have a little run through a praise of what's happened. If you haven't been here since video number one, nip back to there and grab the, um, the uh, half size sheet of rules so you can follow on with what we're doing. Um, before we get going, may I mention that I make these videos in aid of a charity called Cure Parkinson's. You can guess what they're trying to do. There's a link to them below this video and one in the banner on the channel page. If you happen to have a spare dollar, euro, yen, yak or an IPC you can send to them, I'm sure that they would appreciate it. So far in turn number five, the Soviets have had their go. No action has taken place. Germany are having their go. There's going to be one small piece of action. Let's look at that on the other side of this camera. As a praise of what's happened in previous videos, well, we can see the Pacific. Um, Japan are still trying to find a way forward after the big battle in uh, Midway and the season 56 off of San Francisco. Um, they've got a lot of work to do to try and catch up and get involved in this battle. They really have had a hard time of it. Um, over on the eastern side, well... The uh, coalition have now got a good base in eastern Canada. They can start building um, up their forces in there and attacking the three American states, east, west and central. However, the problem that they have at the moment, and it's not necessarily a problem I've come across before in my practice games, um, we have got a logistical nightmare going on. We've got so many transport ships on one side of the Atlantic and so much cargo on the other side of the Atlantic. It has happened before that you do get yourself some hiatuses in, in transport, but I've never had all three powers getting it all um, on one side when they should be on t'other. So to this um, that degree, this turn number five, for the European powers, it's mainly a case of um, moving and building. Um, Soviets have started to build themselves up with some aircraft, now some heavy bombers, because they can't do anything else as far as getting across to this side in enough time um, with only the, the four rounds remaining before this game will end. Um, so they have moved some steam units into eastern Canada. They can come down and attack central or eastern US or even western Canada if they want to in a couple of turns time. Um, Germany have moved some units into eastern Canada or will do this turn. But first of all, they are going to have a little pop at the Americans. However, if they try to do that with the amount of units that um, America have in there, they're going to get their fighters, their, their bombers, their infantry, artillery, tanks smashed to smithereens. So they're going to try and go for economic damage and smash this one industrial complex here. Um, they can get five bombers in there and the um, Americans can hit them with five anti-aircraft gun fires. We'll see how that one plays out in one second. The Germans will also be moving their transport ship down and around the uh, bottom of South Africa to collect these guys from Rhodesia soon and try to take hold of um, French Madagascar and take that one victory place away from the Americans, one of the any three uh, enemy territories which they have to hold. And they are starting to realise that they're a little bit tardy in getting enough units down here to have a pop at Brazil. They are buying for that this time. A couple of um, transport ships and a fighter plane. They're going to come from Italy and they're going to build also some artillery to try and get some more heavy hitting to go over to the American continent for their turn. Um, the Brits, who are going to be coming up later on, they've got this fleet here. This will be coming around these, the bottom of South America. That can get involved in this attack on Brazil as well later on um, with a couple of infantry units and a couple of planes, one on this side of the um, map and one over here in Africa can get involved too. Let's have a look at the bombing that the Americans are going to suffer at the hands of the Germans with their five bombers. We have five dice in place already. These would be the five factory anti-aircraft. They hit up one. They get one shot at the, the German bombers. And they all miss. And now points of damage are awarded as per what the dice roll is 
by the Germans on the factory. This is going to hurt America because they're part of their um, core defense is defense in numbers, and the, the more units that we can take off of them, the better. Um, that is 5, 10, 22, 23, 24. That is maximum damage on that factory because factory damage in this game is double the IPC value of the region, which is 12. Let me get all this tidied up and things moved around and I will see you on the UK turn of turn five. With the UK now, American spies in the United Kingdom tell us that they've got, they've got some infantry artillery they're going to be shipping across to Eastern Canada at the end of this turn and boats from there will be going back to the UK for the next pickup. The spies also tell us that the UK are building infantry artillery. There's going to be a battle though in central United States. UK have got one tank. Three artillery and two guys in there versus not that many infantry. Probably about eight or nine in there, I think, and a tank and a fighter plane. The UK's thinking is, with America's factory here on fire in the East United States at 24 IPCs, if America's pay off that damage to try to um, put infantry directly into this region, they'll only be able to afford to get four guys in there um, and still have lots of damage to, um, afterwards. So we think that America are probably going to try to build over in the western United States and ship units through. So the UK coming through the Central America will cut off that supply line or at least put a hiccup into that supply line. Let's get that battle on the board and see how the UK do. These are the units involved in this battle for Central America and there is eight infantry that the Americans have got. They also do have an anti-aircraft gun. We don't think they're going to be using that as a casualty um, because with this large German air wing up here, they think they should preserve this um, anti-aircraft gun at all costs. It could be very crucial later on. Though the aircraft or the anti-aircraft didn't hit from the factory last time and causing major damage um, to that one uh, Eastern United States factory, um, we still think we should be preserving those as American players. Let's roll this out and see what happens. The UK have one tank rolling in at three. They have three artillery and two infantry, all at twos. Let's see what the Brits can do. And that looks pretty good. Um, there is one hit from the tank and three hits from the infantry artillery. That's four off of America land straight away. One, two, three, four. And I think we're going to do the American reply. It should not be much more than a single roll for America because they are quite strong here. They have one fighter at three. Sorry, one fighter at four, one tank at three. Who score one hit from the fighter plane. That's one of the Brits gone already. And there is the eight infantry, uh, sorry, eight artillery units that America have now got. There is eight infantry units. Get me words right today. There is eight infantry units that America's got in there. We will use six black and two red. They're all at twos. And it's not a good roll. Just two off the UK. That, I'd say, is an under roll by, by America quite severely. So that's two more units from the UK. One infantry and one artillery is going to go from there. The UK will get a second roll at this. They now have one tank, two, two artillery, and one infantry. So the one tank will roll it in at three, and two artillery and one infantry all at twos. And that's pretty good. There's two hits out of that. Uh, that's the tank hitting, that's the infantry artillery hitting. So two more Americans are going to go onto the casualty strip. Their reply forget my fingers working today, will be one fighter at four, one tank at three, uh, one hit off the UK, and then they have four infantry at twos. And they've all missed. 
Wowza, wowza, wowza. This is a, a really odd battle again for the America land. They are under ruling quite severely. Um, I, I thought they would be much stronger than this. The UK, they can't take. They can't take Central America. Surely, surely they can't do that. They have got their one tank at three and two artillery at two. Let's see if they can get a poor roll this time. And it is poor. Okay, that's, that's slightly adjusted the balance. They're just one hit from the artillery. So one American goes this time. America in reply for their third round is a fighter and a tank. Oh, fighter and a tank at the white color dice there. Four and a three. And two hits. That's both the uh, British artillery's now gone from there. And it leaves two at two for the remaining infantry in America to try and take the UK tank out. And it misses. Wow, wow, wow. All that's left on the board now for the UK is that one tank. It's going to roll in at three. It can't survive another round of battle, but it's done so well. It's done a hit. <laughs> nice. So that one American infantry, the remaining one, is now disappeared from the board. Um, in reply, the American fighter and the American tank, fours and threes. Finish off this battle, please. It does. Okay, that's now done. So the UK now have um, ended their attack into Central America, but all America can put back into there, this guy's been lost as well, is one fighter, one tank, and one anti-aircraft gun. They can, of course, ship units back through from the um, east or the west to try to reinforce this region, because it's obviously a, a big, um, a big um, crack in the ointment, should we say, or fly in the ointment, crack in the cake, whatever it's going to be. Um, so as we, it, but it does stop this reinforcement run through. The UK have done tremendously well in that role. That's absolutely brilliant for the, for the coalition. Um, there will be some non-com moves where the UK will be moving this fleet around a couple of sea zones, one, two, to include them in the attack on Brazil. I might be moving these units down as well. We'll have to see well, what, what we think about that. And obviously some units reinforcing across from the UK and boats going backwards and forwards. But apart from that, I will see you on Japanese turn of turn number five. Japan on turn number five are switching over, like the Soviets, to long-range bombing to help out with their part of the campaign. Flicking back just one second, the um, UK's success in central United States it's really a can opener move. We started to realise this. Um, it does mean that America, who were um, thinking about using this fleet outside of Washington to start grabbing some islands, because they're likely to, to lose Western Canada as one of their victory places, and probably that French Madagascan island as well. America have to go and grab some islands from somewhere if they want to win this game. And with this big hole in the middle of the Central America they would think about using these planes to fill in and try to grab some defensive points there. If they do that, they won't have as much strength with this fleet to come down south and start nicking islands back. Um, the UK have positioned themselves quite nicely in Shanghai with a transport ship and a little bit of infantry artillery to try to take anything back which may get grabbed by the Americans. So it does mean Japan are back in the game. If Japan take their fleet Small as it is, it's fairly potent and, and an equivalent of the American fleet. They're just a, a slight, slightly weaker than that. But they can get their fleet up into Sea Zone 64 in two moves. They could possibly bring the submarine as well up to there, but they may not want to do that. Um, and hit Alaska. They would take two IPCs away from the Americans. Their bomber can get involved in it too. And they can get, I think it's 10 infantry artillery into Alaska that could ship down later on, either through Western Canada and take that, or directly onto the, the uh, San Francisco coast. Let's see how Japan gets on, first of all, attacking Alaska. It should be a one-roll affair. Indeed, Japan have taken the extra submarine um, up into sea zone 64. They don't want to compromise that transport fleet. There is still three units left on the mainland that can, that can come across, or three infantry artillery combinations that can come across. There is going to be the battle into Alaska. There is a bombardment first with a battleship and a cruiser at a four and a three. The rest of the pieces are on the board. 
Um, I don't think it's going to last very long at all. We put the two Americans on there too. I forgot to do that. And uh, we evolved the four and the three, black dice being four, for the bombardment phase. And that is just been done in two hits. That's the battleship, that's the cruiser. These two Americans are kaput. But they will get their farewell fighting. Two at twos. And they score one hit. So one of those Japanese guys is lost from here. But it still leaves them pretty handily with nine strong units into Alaska. These planes will land back onto the carrier. This plane will land into uh, eastern Canada. And uh, I don't think there's going to be any non-com moves for Japan at this stage. But... Um, we're going to be looking at America next to see what it can do, if it can hatch a plan to grab some islands or now shut up shop and hope they can make it to the end of turn number eight. I will see you on America's turn. Well, America haven't entirely given up the um, thought of winning this game. They are shutting up shop to a large degree, however, because of this damage done to their factory over in Washington, they cannot afford us to pay off the 24 IPCs damage. It would leave them just uh, a few IPCs in which to put four infantry in and still have damage on their factory. So they're going to be using this factory as their building base. They can't give up on the East United States because that gives up not only the, one of the victory points, but also any money. They can't give up on this factory because it's the only place that they can build from. So the US still have to try to protect these two places solidly as they can and hope to hang on to these places to the end of the game. Also hoping that they also have um, Brazil as a massive distraction for the coalition to try to grab this if the coalition want to win this game. They are going to be making a fairly um, courageous decision with this Pacific fleet. They're going to be moving these fighters onto the US mainland to try to defend the attack from eastern Canada. It means that these carriers will be left naked. They will be left there as sacrificial pieces to try to defend against this um, Japanese Navy coming through and preventing a very small bombardment, but they will be in the way. They will also be leaving the two battleships behind. That should be enough to permanently dissuade Japan from coming down into this sea zone, but you never know. They're going to be loading on an infantry and artillery onto this transport ship and hitting one of the islands in the Pacific to try to grab one of those three victory territories which they need to win the game. They're also going to be bringing the two submarines down through C-Zone 55 into T-Zone 19, ready to cross the Panama Canal, ready to try to attack any British or German fleet in C-Zone 22 off of Brazil. Let's move the Pacific fleet first. These two guys are going to go 1-2 via Midway into Wake Island, and have a battle here. That will be a third victory place for now, although it's not going to be three at the end of a couple more turns time, we don't think. And these two planes will go into Eastern, as we said. Also, we're going to be taking this guy here on his transport ship. He's already grabbed French Madagascar. They can go one, two into C zone 34, drop him off in Persia, uh, there's nobody around here from the coalition forces and nobody in India. I don't suspect he's going to last very long, but it can start this Benny Hill chase off of grabbing potentially these three places. And if they can hang on to their two victory cities by turn number eight, America could still yet win this game. Let's roll out the Wake Island attack first and see how that one goes before we make too many more decisions like that. So here they are on the battle board, the two American guys attacking into Wake Island and the one British guy defending Wake Island. Let's roll this one out. It's two at two for America versus one at two for the UK. Let's roll them all together just for the hell of it. And the Americans have saw the hit, the Brits haven't. So America will now take, we find the ship. America will take Wake Island, along with Western Canada, isn't likely to last, and now Persia, 
and French Madagascar, the Americans will have some sort of shot with their four victory places now of hanging on and maybe even winning this game. Let's see how it pans out in turn number six that will start off with the Soviets shortly. We are at the start of turn number six. Quick look at the Soviet purchase for this turn. One bomber and two tanks. These two tanks are being bought for a reason and a reason we don't want to have to do it for, but needs must. I look at the coalition plan first. Looking at what we got here for America, there is a big danger of the coalition not achieving its aim of getting East United States, West United States and Brazil. It's now or never, we believe. So to that end, the coalition forces got together and they decided that they are going to hit East United States hard as they can this time round. Believing that if they smash this factory with German bombers on this turn, over on this side of the map, it's only going to do economic damage and the Americans can still build four units or five units perhaps, depending on how much damage is done. A failed attack would be quite devastating. Plus, the factory gets five anti-aircraft gun. If the five German bombers can hit the East United States um, units here, they only got one anti-aircraft gun in this state, which can only fire three times. So the odds are better at actually hitting some of the units that are in here. Uh, and obviously, when we take, or if we take, and the we being the coalition we, takes Washington, they then completely kill the American economy. They then cannot build anything because they will have no money in their bank. That's the overall idea of, of hitting just the eastern United States here um, on, on all three of these powers this time round. Um, there will be obviously some shipping units across. This is likely to be the last turn that the Soviets can get any units across um, into this game of any substantial numbers. It's only a few. Um, some of them are stuck in, in um, Greenland. They're going to have to come down if they want to attack this turn and come through the waters here of, of sea zones 2, 10 um, and into season 11 and attack this directly. So that's going to be an amphibious assault by the Soviets. Same with the Germans, but the Germans can do some of this um, with the aid of a battleship, which will give them a little bit of bombardment as well. Um, the reason why the Soviets have bought a couple of tanks is this guy here has been let loose. Um, we're going to be using a German fighter later on in the turn to hit this one transport ship and stop this guy from moving around too much. Uh, two tanks are going to be going into the Caucasus. They're going to start chasing this guy around whichever way he tends to go. Um, the Brits are going to have to turn around and go back up through um, Egypt, try and catch him as well. And there are some units over, obviously, on the other side of the map that can start going in reverse back through India to try and catch this guy. With the other guy here that's free from America on Wake Island, well, one of these Japanese bombers will have to come off the island and come through and take this transport ship out. We can leave the guy there if we need to, but there are some Brits that can come across uh, on their turn and get to Wake Island in two turns time and po would potentially be able to um, at least uh, have an even battle with this guy, an even chance of, of winning that one there. Um, and obviously the one down in uh, Brazil, there are still some Brits trying to come around to it. There's some Americans trying to get through um, the Panama Canal, but we think the Germans are going to cut them off with their two destroyers here. So that could be an evenish battle as well. Let's stop talking and start rolling some dice. The first attack is going to be whatever we can muster from the Soviet troops. There's a couple of guys up here that were already in um, Western Canada can come down and hit here and these guys from Greenland can come down and hit here and there's two fighter planes up there can aid this attack. I'll get it on the board and I will see you there. So this is how the battle board now looks with the Soviets filled in. Pretty damn dangerous if you, if you ask me. Uh, they're going to go in against a couple of anti-aircraft fire first, those two um, fighter planes. Anti-aircraft fire hits at ones and one of them does score a hit. That's a Soviet plane taking out the action straight away. Oh dear. So they have one fighter plane and two tanks boarding in at three, the Soviets. And they've just scored three hits. Nice. So three Americans immediately go. That's... Um, a bit heavier than they wanted to do. Um, and now they have two infantry and two artillery rolling in at twos and two naked infantry going in at ones. So twos and ones for the ground attack. And they've just scored the two hits. 
but that is actually five off of the, uh, the American troops. Now, so fiddling around in the background, we now have to roll the American reply. I shall remove their anti-aircraft gun because I don't think we're going to be um, taking that as a casualty any time soon. Um, it clears the board that way. We now have three fighter planes at four rolling in for America who've scored one hit against the Soviets. And now they have their 15 uh, infantry units. We do um, three lots of five dice, all hitting at twos. They've scored one hit there. I shall remove one to the casualty saw, one to the off the board for the Soviets. We've got two more lots at five. And there's no hits by America. Oh, things are turning out disastrously. Let's change over to red dice. They might be more lucky. Um, for America, the last lot of um, five that they can throw, and just one damage again. Oh, me giddy aunt. So, Soviets will get a second go at this attack. These are the Soviet losses, these um, three infantry units. That's the one plane that's also gone. And it's five American infantry have been lost straight away. Wowzer, wowzer, we might be grabbing that um, anti-aircraft gun and using that as a casualty if, if it goes as badly in the second round of attack as it did in that first round. So, the Soviets would have three at three for the tank and the two fighters that are there. And then score two more hits on America. They're hardy souls, these Soviet troops, aren't they? And they're going to have three at two we change over to the red dust like we did for the Americans for the artillery infantry combinations that the Soviets have. And they scored one more hit as well. Wow. Let's see if America can do better in defence because they really do need to do better in defence. Otherwise, the um, coalition will be flooding into the eastern United States. They have three fighter planes, the Americans, all rolling in at four. Scoring two hits, that's better. We we'll take two off of there. Then they have 10 infantry units left alive, which will be the 10 dice I have in my hand. 10 at two. Well, can you add them and Eva? That was a nightmare moment to run out of capture time. Luckily, though, I suppose it could have been worse. It was the last roll of the battle. That um, that massive roll for America at the end did wipe out all the uh, Soviet troops that are in there. We've reset back to the board for continuity's sake. There are um, seven American infantry and their three fighters still there, plus their anti-aircraft. We're going to be loading these German units in against them for the uh, next wave of battling going on. Let's keep our fingers crossed for America's sake. Okay, that is the battle board set up, ready for this attack of Germany into the eastern United States. They have got five German bombers, four German fighters, three German tanks, and a partridge in a pear tree in the shape of a bombardment from their big battleship. Um, there will be some anti-aircraft fire going on first by the Americans. We think that's going to be a sacrificial piece this time. I don't think there's going to be a, a need for it in the next round of, of this wave that's coming through. But before we do that attack, we're going to be doing an attack into Persia to try to stop this guy from going on his roaming arounds. These German guys will get on this German transport, nip into C-Zone 34, infantry artillery, and have a 2 at 2 versus a 1 at 2 battle. They could grab this tank from anglo Egyptian Sudan instead of maybe this artillery unit, but they're figuring that um, should this go well, it will go well. If it goes badly, they could benefit from having the, the extra speed this tank will offer them. Yes, the Soviets got some tanks in the Caucasus, but we are really sort of crossing our I's and dotting our T's here. Belts and braces, you know the idea. So let's do that battle first. It's very simple, very quick to roll out. We have two Germans at two, who both miss, and an American rolling in at two, who misses as well. OK, round two of that battle. We roll them together. And the German has hit now. The American has been knocked out of... Persia. I shall tidy up the IPC from there. There might be an IPC in there. Leave those German guys in there. That stops that German guy from roaming around. We still have the one in the Pacific to, th to think about. 
Let's not get this guys, these guys confused with the main battle. It's only what's on the board here. And the first thing we're going to do is roll this one bombardment from that battleship that's moved down from C zone 1 into C zone um, 11. It hits at the 4, so one of the Americans is immediately lost in this attack. That leaves them just now 6 guys in there. Uh, we can use the anti-aircraft gun that the American has to roll against three of the incoming massive German air wings. It hits at a one, or misses in this case. That will go back onto the battle board for sure to be used as a casualty later on. And we can roll now this main German attack. There is the five fighters, sorry, five bombers and four fighters. So, fours and threes. Huge damage. Huge, huge. Oh my giddy, aunt. that's even worse than I thought. That is an, that's a jackpot, isn't it? I think that is a full house. The black dice are all at fours. The red dice are all, all at threes. That's nine damage. There is seven. Uh, one's already been taken, so that leaves six, seven, eight, nine. Wowzer, wowzer, wowzer. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry, get that one right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, eight, nine. That was a m absolute massive roll. A massive roll by that German air wing. We were afraid of that, but I, you're not expecting to see that very often. Crikey, O'Reilly. Um, so, um, we, we st still have yet to... I mean, that's, that's, once again, I'm flabbergasted with dice rolls in this game. We still have three German tanks that can roll here near at three, and three naked infantry. Can they one roll themselves into there? Well, it's, it's entirely possible. It's entirely likely, I would think. Um, so three tanks at three are the black dice, three infantry at one are the red dice. And tanks, infantry have, have now finished off the American air wing up there. Oh, that, well, it's not really a, 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 a surprise, but the, the speed of that attack, that was a blitzkrieg, that is for sure, absolutely for sure. So, there are three American fighters defending at four, or there were. One of them scores hit, that's one of the German infantry off of the board. There were seven um, infantry units that can fight back. Um, and who are now lost. Seven at two, and just the one hit. Your heart sinks when you see dice rolls like that. It's the, the disparity of it, but that is the way the leper crumbles. Um, these are the remaining units for Germany. They will go back, the air wing will go back into eastern Canada, and these ground units will get themselves into the United States and take their money. Um, whether they hold on to it for very long, we do not know. The Brits may yet still attack Central Canada on this turn. It could be a good move to make to try to, a, a bold move to make, um, rather than reinforcing. Let me think about that before we do too much. These destroyers will come into C Zone 18. They're going to cover off these submarines coming through, and I think it's just going to be, other than that, some, some non-com moving of um, taking these units, heading them towards Brazil. They can't quite get there on this turn, and moving some reinforcements back over to eastern Canada from the European mainland. I, I'm amazed at that role. I will see you um, sometime at the start of the British turn for sure. We are on turn number six with the UK forces in our game against America. We think the game for America is pretty much up, but we have to finish this off properly for form. Uh, the UK are going to be making two small attacks, one against Western Canada, clearing the way for Japan to come down through Western Canada and into Western United States on turn number seven, that's going to be. They're also going to be attacking the UK uh, into the central United States, they are facing a bigger force than they would want to, but um, it, it clears the way for the German troops to come through. Germany themselves, having taken this factory and the IPCs for that state, can pay off all that damage and start building in there. So I think there's little chance now of America actually winning this game, but can they grab a draw out of it? 
to grab a jaw, the coalition must not win. That's the way the America are going to do this. Um, they're going to lose those two states there, we're pretty much sure. Can they keep hold of Brazil? Um, if a coalition get Brazil and those two states, then the coalition wins. It looks unlikely that America can do that. They have got no transport that can take anything into Brazil. Um, it's just a matter of what, what the coalition can get down here to attack it. Obviously, the Brits have some fleet down here coming across. Germany have some fleet coming across and Britain have built a small amount of fleet to come down as well that can reach there on turn number eight should they need it but the job might be done beforehand. Let's get those two battles up on the board. There's no need to put them up. We can just do that by rolling the dice. So here are the two dice for the British infantry artillery in combination rolling in at two. They score one hit against America. America will have two dice in defence for their two infantry rolling in at twos. And they both miss. Ooh. So, UK again with the infantry artillery. They've now finished off the Americans in there. What can the one guy do in defence? Gets a hit. Nice. OK, let's um, divide that up off the board. We have these two guys going and the one British infantry going. Um, that comes off there and that becomes a British state. I shall adjust the money off camera. We then have these... Two British infantry going against these Americans. I should put that up on the board and see you there. This is the battle for Central America. Two British infantry artillery in combination versus a fighter, a tank and half a dozen infantry that the Americans have. Plus an anti-aircraft gun. We may yet not take that as a casualty because should the Americans survive and they're likely to, there is this big German air wing which they want to defend against the Americans um, so keeping that uh, alive would be a, a, a viable prospect let's roll this out first British infantry artillery there is two infantry and two artillery we like using different coloured dice even though it's the same numbers all at twos and just one the infantry is hit so one American gets moved behind in defence and it's a mighty defence for them one fighter at four, one tank at three. Both missing. And half a dozen infantry, big and strong, all at twos. And they've just scored four hits. Nice. One, two, three, four. That is the Brits. Effectively, one rolled from there. Um, it happens sometimes with these crazy dice, this game. Uh, I should get that back on the board and see you in a sec. OK, to finish off the UK round, they've now moved their fleet into position outside of Brazil. They could have attacked this round, but we wanted to hold off to make sure we got enough units, either with the UK's fleet that's come down from um, the UK heading towards the Gulf of Mexico. It can divert to Brazil um, or wait for the Germans to come across with their big tanks and, and act as a secondary force going in there um, on turn number seven. Next up will be Japan. And we think they're going to be making just a small manoeuvre into West in Canada, but they might just take on this American fleet outside San Francisco just for the fun of it. Japan on turn number six are purchasing four Mitsubishi G4M Betis that will be going on to the Japanese mainland and will be able to get into the action on turn number seven or eight should they be needed. I don't think it's going to go that far. They have a plan, Stan. They are going to be attacking this American fleet off of the San Francisco coast. Not just for the fun of it, there's a, a very good reason for it. Because we think that the Americans um, have lost this game, their move is really telegraphed like a pole. All that they can try to do is hang on to Brazil. All they can do to hang on to Brazil is bring these two fighters down from up north and get them down to Brazil. Only one of them can reach this turn. They'd have to move their fleet, these Americans, down and around or down and through to get this second fighter into here. So to prevent that second fighter getting down to Brazil, the, uh, the Japanese fleet are going to move into sea zones, into sea zone 56 and have a battle there. They're going to be using one of their fighters off of this Trans this um, carrier, one, two, to take out the transport ship, ending America's chance at all of, of, of grabbing a victory. It's, it's sort of a, 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 a belt and braces jobby here. But these two bombers can come across, one, two, three, four, join in this battle, and then go 
five, six, and land in Western Canada, a safe landing point. Um, that's about all Japan are going to be doing this turn round. Let's get that battle up onto the battle board. Okay, here is how it looks on the board. No time at the present. Japan do have one submarine. America do not have a destroyer. They will get a surprise strike with that submarine first, rolling in at a two. And getting a hit. Nice. Let's take that off of one of the American carriers because it's quite a weak unit anyway. Um, we actually, no, 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 no. Let's, let's roll a battleship on its side. Let's do that. Um, and roll the rest of the Japanese attack. They have one battleship themselves at four and two bombers at four. And they've scored two hits. That's two more off of America. So that's going to battleship take the second hit. And now we can take this carrier off the board or to the casualty strip, should we say. They have one fighter at three, one cruiser at three, and one destroyer at two. So the reds are the highest ones this time. And two more hits off of America. That is going to be the second aircraft carrier and one of the battleships going down. For Japan, now one attack with the, the aircraft carrier to one. Oh my giddy up, could you believe that? Uh, okay, it happens. Dice are going, to, th this whole game, dice have been so bad for America. They really have had the, the rough end of the stick here. So, for America, all that's left there, alive, is one aircraft. They do get all their defensive roles first. They have two uh, battleships and one fighter plane, all at fours. They have scored just the one hit on the, um, on the Japanese forces. They take that on their battleship. And they have uh, two carriers rolling in at twos in this version of the game. And they've scored one hit as well. So the uh, Japanese can take that on their destroyer quite happily. And they can roll now in Japan to finish this off. They have two fighters, uh, sorry, two bombers at four and one battleship at four. And that is the American plane now gone from there. We remove him from there onto the casualty strip. It's a dying roll to finish off this fleet. Scores a hit. Um, take the cruiser out, I should think, is the most obvious choice for mobilities wise. So. The battleship gets rewrited, the plane falls over, that lot there, including the submarine, that hasn't fallen over for any reason, that lot there will all go back into sea zone 56. The transport is gone because this fight has taken it out in the um, the, the Japanese troops here in Alaska were rolled into Western Canada, lining up for turn number seven, and, and um, the final attack really is not going to last much longer than that. Okay, slightly odd cut there. The oven timer went off. Couldn't let me dinner burn. I'll pick up from where I think we were, where I left you. Um, Japan have loaded themselves back into Sea Zone 56. Their fighters have come back in from Wake Island. They've put their bombers on the board. This uh, Japanese units up here are moving into Western Canada from Alaska. I think that's where I got to, not sure. Um, they can now hit Western United States on next turn. Um, and they can start loading units across with some more transport ships should this lot fail i can't see it failing at all um america land telegraphing their move will be flying this one fighter down one two three four into brazil giving them some hope of hanging on there but it's really not very much um they can't send their submarines through it's just a suicide mission um so we're just going to leave them there I, I i can't see any point in doing anything with them at all um, the, um, and the other thing that the Americans will be doing in trying to hang on for a little bit longer, making more of a game of it, is moving these units from the central into, into western United States. It gives them two anti-aircraft guns, a tank and a, a few more infantry units in there. They're not giving up on this space because they, got, they can't collect the income from it anyway. Um, and so it's all that can come through from here, potentially from Germany on next turn, will be just three tanks. And three tanks aren't enough to, um, to make a, a, a tallying blow. Um, so that will be enough for this video number three. Video number four will begin with the Soviets moving themselves into Central America and the, 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 some of the tidying up job 
But I, I don't think um, if if America last turn number seven against that um, Japanese um, invasion, they won't last turn number eight. But we'll see what happens in video number four. Till next time, be cool.